Welcome to our review on chemical equations. The first type of equation that you should know about is the easiest of them to use, which is the word equation. Now, word equations tell us the names of our reactants and the names of our products. So I've given you an example of a reaction between magnesium and oxygen there, making magnesium oxide. So our reactants always go on the left hand side, which is magnesium and the oxygen, and the products on the right which is magnesium oxide. Now this is the kind of question that's really nice on the exam paper because it's really easy. The exam board actually give you the entire answer in the question. So the kind of question they could ask you is in that second box, copper carbonate decomposes when heated to make copper oxide and carbon dioxide. Write a word equation for this reaction. So all you need to do to get the mark there is copy the name of the reactants. In this case, it's only the one, the copper carbonate. You place your arrow to obviously represent the chemical change, and then you write the name of the products on the right-hand side. In this case, copper oxide and carbon dioxide. The second type of equation you might be asked to write are symbol equations. Now, these will always be balanced. So what this actually tells us not only are the actual chemicals that we're dealing with, but it tells us how the atoms are arranged in the reactants and the products. It also tells us the relative amounts of each substance once it's been balanced. So this is the more complex one, and it does rely on us using those chemical symbols that we've looked at on the periodic table, and it does rely on us knowing how to balance an equation. So how do we balance chemical equations? The first thing to do is you just write the symbol equation without thinking about balancing it. So in the example we've got here, we've got calcium carbonate reacting with hydrochloric acid, and we're going to make three products, calcium chloride, water, and carbon dioxide. So what we're going to do is just change those into the symbols. So CaCO3 is our calcium carbonate, HCl, hydrochloric acid, calcium chloride is CaCl2, and then water, H2O, carbon dioxide, CO2. So that's our first step is to write the symbol equation. Now on the old specification, that always used to be worth one mark to you out of the two you'd get for any balanced equation question. So even if you're not sure about balancing, always write the symbols showing the reactants and the products, because at least you can get one of the two marks. The next thing to do then is to actually divide it up. So you can see I've put a line down under the arrow. So we've divided our reactants from our products. The next thing I've done there is I've written down the symbol for each element that's involved. And you'll notice it's identical elements on each side as we would expect. Then you count up how many of each element are on each side. So we can see in terms of our reactants on the left hand side there, we have one calcium, one carbon, three oxygens, one hydrogen, and one chlorine. If we look at our products on the right, we have one calcium, one carbon, three oxygens, but two hydrogens and two chlorines. So instantly we can see because those numbers on the left and the right are different, this isn't a balanced equation. So we've got to do something to it. The next thing we've got to do is actually work out what numbers need to go in. So start off by working out what's already balanced. And you can see in the little diagrams of the actual atoms, I've crossed out all the ones that are already balanced. So that literally leaves us with just the hydrogen and the chlorine. So we've got one hydrogen and one chlorine on the left, and we've got two hydrogens and two chlorines on the right. So what we need to do is work out what number we put in. And the key thing here is where that number can go. So you'll see I've put little red lines in front of each of those chemical formulae. That's the only place you can put a number to balance it. You can't put it in the middle of the compound because you would then completely change the chemical formula, which you can't do. So it can only go in front of the compounds. And that means it's multiplying that entire formula by that number. So in order to actually balance this one, all we need to do is put a number two in front of our HCl on the left hand side. Because we had two hydrogens and two chlorines on the right, if we look at our reactants, the only one that had those two chemicals is the hydrochloric acid. So we only had one of each. In order to get the two that we needed, the big two goes in front of the formula. 
The last thing we need to know about in terms of our chemical equations are what are called state symbols. Now, a state symbol just tells us the physical state of any substance in that chemical reaction. And there are four that we need to know. So three of them, very common, and we should know these ones in terms of our particle model from our earlier chemistry topic. So solid, liquid, and gas. If it's a solid, you put a little S in brackets. If it's a liquid, it's an L. And if it's a gas, it's a G. The only new one is this term aqueous solution, which is an AQ in brackets. Now I've given you an example at the bottom as to what you could see here. So we've got sodium reacting with water. Sodium is a solid, hence the S. Our water is a liquid, water will always be a liquid. Then we've got our sodium hydroxide, which is an aqueous solution, and then hydrogen as a gas. Now, what you'll actually find is that in the question on the exam paper, they will actually say include state symbols in your answer. Now, as soon as they say that, there's going to be one of the marks in that question for using the state symbols. So go careful not to miss that part when you are writing the balanced symbol equation.